Welcome to Stormwater Drainage Solutions. And in today's video, we're gonna be teaching you how to make different connections using corrugated drainage pipe. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so a very common connection question I get asked is how do you connect corrugated pipe to a PVC pipe? So I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate to you a few different ways you can make that connection. Let's go ahead and do it. All right, so the first connection I'm gonna show you is gonna be the FDM corrugated to PVC drainage adapter. Now, the way this adapter works, it's gonna to connect to both sewer thin wall fittings that work for SDR 35, and it also works for schedule 20 pipe, and these also can connect into schedule 40. It has two separate bell ends right here with two different sizes to connect into either one. And then of course, the other side is your barbed end, and that's gonna be for corrugated. So the way these work, if you get the ones that have the holes already pre-drilled in them, you're gonna slip that over your hub on your PVC fitting. So let's say for instance, this is a main line coming through here and you have a corrugated lateral that you wanna pick up. You're gonna go ahead and slip this on here. You're gonna drill two holes in the top, one here and one here. Then you're gonna use these push pen fasteners. These push pen fasteners are gonna just push right through here on either side, and then that's gonna lock it into place. Last thing you're gonna do is you're gonna use some really good PVC tile tape. This is drainage tape. This is specifically for drainage systems, and you're gonna wrap that connection right here with your tile tape. And then you get your corrugated pipe, corrugated pipe is going to pop right on that barbed end and same thing you're going to use that tile tape and you're going to seal up that joint with a good six to eight wraps and you want it thick on there all right so the next connection i'm going to go ahead and show you this one right here is by nds so this connection can actually be solvent welded into your hub of your pvc fitting using a typical solvent cement for pvc so Obviously, I'm not gonna open this up and solvent cement it together, but you get the idea. You're gonna go ahead and apply your solvent cement on the inside of your hub and on the outside of this fitting. You're gonna push this fitting in there and that's gonna make a solvent cement connection. Now you could go the extra step and you could also tile tape that up if you want. It's not necessary because these two plastics are gonna be fused together. Now, once that connection's on there, go ahead and get your corrugated pipe. Same idea as the FDM adapter. This adapter has barbs as well. You're gonna slide that on there. It's gonna make a connection with those barbs. And then you're gonna to wanna to tile tape that seam and tile tape it up nice and tight, about six to eight wraps. All right, so then the last way to connect corrugated to PVC is going to be using a no hub fitting, also known as a rubber boot or a fern co. So basically the way you're going to make this connection, if you choose to do it, you're going to loosen these hose clamps. You're gonna slide one end over where your lateral is gonna be entering into your main line. And then once that's slid over, go ahead and use a flathead screwdriver and tighten down that hose clamp nice and tight onto that hub. And then the next connection is gonna be your corrugated lateral and that's going to connect in on the other side. You're gonna slide that in and you wanna push it all the way until this corrugated butts up against the inside of that hub, of that PVC underneath this rubber coupling. And then same idea, you're gonna use your flathead screwdriver. You're gonna tighten down this hose clamp, but on this side with corrugated, especially if you're working with big box store corrugated and not a tougher one like the FDM, you know, single wall, then you're gonna to want to make sure you don't tighten this down too, too tight where you start to crush this pipe. This side, you're not gonna crush it. This one, you could crush it. So make sure you don't overly tighten this side. And that's all it takes to make that connection with your rubber boot. All right, so the next connection I'm gonna show you is how to connect one corrugated drainage pipe to another. So these are external couplings. This is what you wanna use whenever you're connecting a corrugated pipe to a corrugated pipe. This goes on the outside of the pipe so nothing obstructs the inside of the pipe and it doesn't decrease the inner diameter of that corrugated pipe. So this one right here is the French Drain Man external coupling. It's got four barbs on either end. So you've got eight total to hold those two corrugated pipes together. And then here's another example of an external coupling. Same idea, it's got barbs on either end, and this, this is the way you wanna to connect two corrugated pipes together. So let me go ahead and show you here. 
All right, so to make this connection, it's simple. All you're gonna do is take your external coupling, you're gonna push it on one side of your corrugated line, take your other side, push both together until they can't go any farther in both of these hubs. And as you can see, it holds it together. Those barbs will hold it on there, but it doesn't make a very solid connection. So the final thing you're gonna to wanna to do do not skip this. Use tile tape. Use corrugated drainage tile tape. They make this stuff for a reason. You're going to wrap both of these joints with both these pipes pushed firmly into the hubs of this coupling. And like I said earlier, you're gonna wrap it six to eight times. Usually the way I do it is I just start on this end and I just wrap it all the way down to this end. All right, so the next external coupling we're gonna do is the FDM one. Now, the reason why I switched to an FDM solid corrugated pipe, and we're gonna be using this big box store one, is I wanna show you guys the difference in something. So we're gonna go ahead and stick this coupling on to make our connection. As you can see, I mean, it holds, but there's a lot of play in there. And same with this coupling that you can get at your local big box store. You can slip it on and there is a lot of play with it. I mean, look at that, actually I could pull, I pulled it right off. Now, watch what happens when I slip this coupling into the FDM solid. You can hear the difference. I mean, <laughs> you're not getting that off of there, not without taking a flathead screwdriver and slowly pushing these barbs up to be able to pull it off. So that right there just kind of shows you the difference between big box store pipe and an actual drainage pipe that is made for drainage. Now, obviously you're gonna to wanna to use the tile tape on your seams whenever you connect. We already went over that with the first one, but just to show you guys something else. So this is the big box store coupling on the FDM. much more solid connection on FDM compared to the big box store. All right, so I wanted to show you guys the difference between these two pipes right here. So this pipe, the longer one, this is the new stuff that the big box stores are selling. So this is what the tooling got changed over to. And when I say tooling, I mean the machines, the equipment that makes this pipe, that makes this corrugated pipe. Now, this is the old school stuff that the big box stores were selling. Now, I don't know how well you can see it on the camera, but in person, you can really tell a big difference. The corrugations are way different. The size of the pipe is also slightly different. That is why that couplink, both of those couplings, don't fit that well on the new stuff compared to the old stuff. They fit a lot better and a lot more snug on the old stuff. All right, so one of the last connections I'm gonna show you guys is probably one of the ones you don't wanna make. So. What we've seen is we've seen guys getting a piece of corrugated pipe, cutting it, and literally crushing it together like this, and then sliding one end into the corrugated main line like that, and then sliding the other end into the other side. I'm not even gonna push it in all the way because I don't feel like having to peel it out, peel it apart. But basically when you do this, when you do something like this, all it does is it decreases the in, inner diameter of this corrugated pipe and it creates two additional snag points on either end. Now, to make matters worse, if you're not tile taping it, then that's just gonna be an area for root intrusion as well. So now I understand people wanna save money. You know, they don't always wanna spend an extra you know, extra couple of bucks to get a proper coupling, a proper connection, you know, if you're on a budget. So let me show you a better way to do this. If you wanna just use a piece of scrap corrugated pipe to make a coupling, here's a much better way to do it. Same thing, go ahead and cut it down. And then you're going to see if I can do this without making a mess. You're going to slide it over one end. So this coupling is eight corrugations long. That's how many I counted out before I cut it. So that's gonna be four on one end of your mainline pipe and four is gonna be hooked onto the other end of your mainline pipe. So you're gonna get your other mainline pipe, 
same exact thing. You're going to slide it in all the way. And now you have a band around both of your corrugated pipes and it's an external band. So it's not affecting the inside of this pipe in any way. Now, when you do this, it is going to split the, the band. The band is going to spread because it's not going to be able to wrap all the way around because you're putting something inside of it, obviously. So you are going to have a bigger seam right here. And there is going to be a seam here for root intrusion. If you want to, you can make and cut another one. And I'm not going to do it here because I'm going to be having to force it and it's just going to waste time. But you can, you can open this up enough and you can pop it over the other side and it's going to cover that seam up and it's going to cover that little opening up. And then the last thing you're going to do, which I would recommend doing is tile taping it up. You want to keep roots out of your drainage system. Roots are going to be the number one enemy for any drainage system. I don't care what kind of pipe you're using. I don't care if you're using schedule 40 PVC, SDR 35, schedule 20, uh, triple wall, French drain man, solid pipe, uh, big box store corrugated pipe. It doesn't matter what kind of pipe you're using. If you fail when you're installing it and those connections are weak, the roots are going to get in there. It's going to infiltrate the system. And over time, it's going to ruin the system. And you're going to have to constantly be snaking that system out. It, it, or if it goes too long, those roots are just going to overtake it. You're not even going to be able to snake it out because the pipe is going to be so far gone and collapsed. You're not going to be able to get a cable through there. So I'm telling you right now, the joints are the most important thing in any drainage system. Take care of the joints, tile tape them up, do everything you can do to keep the roots out. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video on corrugated connections. Now, like I already stated earlier, it's like beating a dead horse, but you want to tile tape up corrugated connections. It's very important. So if you enjoyed this video, like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, this is SWDS signing off.